One of the things I've been kind of meaning to get around to for a while is fixing the broken teeth on the back gears on my lathe. It's a Logan Model 200. That doesn't really matter, and this really isn't what this video is about anyway. So one of the things that happens when you have a modestly successful YouTube channel like this one is you start getting offers of people wanting to send you their products to review and use in your videos, and frankly, a lot of them are really kind of weird. But once in a while, something comes along that makes you say, Sure, I'll chill for a free laser engraver. And so if you're wondering what this has to do with the lathe, just bear with me for a minute. This is the Ray 5 10 watt laser engraver from Longer 3D. It of course comes in a whole bunch of pieces. I'm gonna go put this together. I don't think that's something you really need to see. Overall, I'd say the assembly on that was pretty straightforward. There are a couple little things that gave me some trouble, but the directions that come with it, I would say, are adequate. One thing that I will give bonus points for is all of the hex keys that come with it have the little ball end on them. That's really helpful when you're trying to get back into corners like this. It doesn't really affect the actual laser cutter, but it's a nice touch. This was just one of the files that was on the memory card that comes with it. Some cute little owls. They look really nice. Uh, that's really nice if you have something wood that you want to put a bird on. But this is more of a metal working channel, so let's try some metal. I just put down a piece of masking tape and cut through it to align the piece that I'm engraving. Running this at 100% on the laser, so using all 10 watts and 400 millimeters per minute. So that came out really good. I'm really impressed by that. This is a piece of high-speed steel. Everything on there is super crisp. The laser focus on this is like 0 0.06 millimeters, which is two thousandths of an inch, so it should have pretty good resolution, and it sure does. Everything's nice and crisp looking. So what the heck am I making here? So to explain what this is, this is a high-speed steel tool bit. And this shape is an involute gear profile. It's for a 14 diametral pitch, 14 and a half degree pressure angle, 72 tooth gear, which happens to be the gear from the lathe that's broken. And so basically the part that's engraved is the gear teeth. The part that's still silver is the space in between them. So the thing about an involute profile for a gear tooth is it's something that can be worked out mathematically, but in terms of laying it out in some way that we can grind it in the shop, it gets harder. So I just found an online gear generator, plugged in my numbers, got the profile for the gear, and then engraved it on there. So now all I need to do is grind to that line, and I'll have my cutter. Grinding to a line by hand like this even on something this small, is actually something you can do with a fairly high degree of accuracy. Of course, the one I ground second came out better, so that's the one I'll show you. But both of them are pretty all right. They should work. The other thing to keep in mind with involute gears is the tooth profile depends on the size of the gear, which is why I have two of these. I just did one on each end, and they're labeled so I know which one it is. Of course, if I'm recutting these teeth, I need something there to cut. These gears are made of what Logan referred to as semi-steel, which from what I can gather is sort of cast iron with maybe a little steel mixed in. So I think brazing is probably going to be a better option than trying to weld them. So I let these cool off nice and slow, and now we'll just take them back over to the lathe to clean them up. Oh yeah.
So final result, of course, the one that I did first did off camera came out pretty nice. And the one that I did on camera gave me a bit more trouble. And I finally, after like four or five tries, what I eventually figured out was the arbor this was on was coming loose in the collet and the spindexer. Desperate times call for desperate measures, so I super glued it in. The other thing I've been fighting is there is ever so slight play in the clapper box itself. So if the tool pressure isn't perfectly even, which it isn't because it's a hand ground tool, it kind of does some funny things once it starts cutting. It uh, doesn't always cut exactly straight. I'll have to go back and look at this and see if there's anything I can do about that. I ended up brazing this up like five times and recutting it, but finally got it good enough. So I feel like this is a viable way of doing this. It's not the way of doing it. It's probably not even the best way of doing it. Should you go out and buy one of these laser engravers just to make involute cutters? Probably not, but if you do want to buy one, there's a link in the description. If you were doing a lot of these, you'd probably want to just go buy the proper involute cutters for them. And if you're just doing, you know, one tooth repair, filing it's not a bad way to go either. You could probably even use the laser engraver to lay out where you need to file. Really just wanted to do it this way to kind of do something outside the box, maybe give you some ideas of other things you could do with it, show you what it'll do. Now I just need to go get all this put back together, but... While I have it apart, I should replace the catch on the rack that engages the back gears. This is something that's always broken on these Logans. Problem is, since I don't have it, I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to look like. But I drew up my best guess in CAD, and I'll just make a test piece. That's close, but I think I can do better. All right, I'm pretty happy with this one. It sticks out pretty well, engages, slides in. Might need a little filing when I'm done with it, but I think that'll be pretty good. I put the drawing for this on my Patreon in case you need to make one of these. So this is actually a piece of lawnmower blade. I surface ground it to thickness, squared up two edges. I did one pass on there, decided I wanted to go back and do another, but I didn't get it quite in the same spot the first time. So I've got two sets of lines on here, but these are basically just my layout lines. Now I just need to cut that out to shape, drill that hole. I'll drill that hole first because it's really small. This gets a 330 seconds hole and I just used the back end of the drill bit to line that up. Ref cut this out with the bandsaw, and now all I have to do is file to that line. Got the final result there, and a bunch of fiddly little parts to go together here. So, final result. Now I don't need vice grips on there anymore. I've got all this back together for the second time. 
first time one of my braze jobs failed almost immediately. I kind of suspected that it might be bad, but I just brazed it up again. And this time I also cut a piece of masking tape to serve as a little visual guide. And that really helped to make sure that things stayed on track as I was cutting it. I did previously try directly marking on the gear, but it doesn't mark the braise, and I couldn't get it lined up quite right. But we got this all back together. I've been running it in a little bit, and it's still a little bit noisy, but as it runs in more, it should get better. Let's see what else we can do with this thing. This thing's supposed to be able to go through 20 millimeter wood. Let's see how it does. So doing 20 millimeter, about three quarters of an inch maple, even doing five passes, it didn't quite make it through. I just kind of knocked this back with the bandsaw. So I swapped over to some pines, a little thinner, it's half inch, like 13 millimeters. And it blasted through that in two passes. Could actually have used one more just to clean up the bottom edge a little bit. I think doing the maple, because it's a very hard wood, was just asking a little too much especially without having an air assist on this. There is one that's optional, but I don't have it. It just helps blast some of this stuff out, let the laser get down in there a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is flip this over and cut it from the back side. So same sort of thing I did before. I'm gonna use some masking tape to line this up because there's not really a way to touch off with it. And I also decided it would be a good idea to put a piece of aluminum down so that I don't keep burning marks into my table. So what happened there was because this piece got so thin, it actually, I guess, started burning and triggered the flame detection on this, which just shuts the machine down. You still need to babysit it because it doesn't put it out, it just turns off if it thinks that something caught on fire, so it's a nice feature to have, so just need to set this up again. I think this will actually more or less pop out at this point. So I did not get that lined up perfectly, so it didn't cut completely through. I tried knocking some of these out, kind of blew out the back side of it. So that was a bit of a failure. So I did what I should have done at first and went back and just did a bunch of test pieces to figure out the you know feeds and speeds, the settings for getting this thing to actually cut through this stuff. And I did eventually work it out. Six passes at 150 millimeters a minute, 100%. And that went through. Started over, did it out of pine this time, it does cut a little quicker than the maple. I ended up cutting all of the pieces I need for this, and I did the sides and the back out of half inch because it's a lot quicker. This does take quite a while to get through it, but the advantage is you can do these really nice mortise and tenon joints on it. I put this thing together as a test fit and was going to pull it apart and glue it together, but it fits so well I don't really want to take it apart again. So what this is, is it's a drill index for my Morse taper shank drills. I've gotten to the point where I have enough of these, I want them organized, but I don't have the full set. Figured I'd make the drill index for the full set and fill in as I pick up more here and there. Of course, I'd like to know what's where in here, because I don't even know which ones I have. So I sanded the char off the front of this, and we'll just engrave sizes on that. I had a little bit of trouble aligning this the first time, had to kind of reset, try again. And it cut in a little bit deeper than I would have liked, but again, first time using it, it'll take me some time to figure out all the best settings and get some experience with this thing. But overall, I think that's a pretty nice piece. Now I need more drills. And of course, and probably most importantly, let's do some shop art.
So this is from a World War II era sales brochure for the Index Model 40 milling machine that I have. Something I've kind of wanted to print out and have in the shop for a while, just haven't gotten around to doing it. Felt like that was a good way to do it. So it seems like in terms of color difference, there's not a whole lot of difference between the darker areas and what was lighter on the original prints. It's more depth. The areas that were black are a lot deeper. And I think that's just an issue of getting the speed and power properly set. Something that's going to take a little bit of fiddling around with. But for the first go at engraving something like this, that's a pretty good result. I haven't really gotten to spend as much time getting this thing dialed in as I would like, so I'll probably do a follow-up video in a few months once I spend some more time working with it, getting settings figured out and that sort of stuff. So if there's anything you would like to see me, you know, shoot a laser beam at, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see what I do with this thing, stick around.